Long ago, the world was under the control of the gods, both just and menacing. All things happened because the gods willed it. But then one day, the will of the gods disappeared, and man was left to his own devices. Many centuries have passed, and the gods' voices have been silent. But now, a new group of adventurers may stumble upon the secrets of the legends of the Forgotten Gods. Yes, sorry. Right. I'm just going to... I need to learn more about how this spell works, but if anything, I'll just leave it blank and I'll just add it to spell later. Avoid legal snags by telling people they are being recorded. Guys, you're being recorded. <laughs> oh. Thank you for joining us. Break, it's it's break hard. Fourth wall. I hey. never knew this whole time. And here <laughs> I thought I wasn't. Darn it, Chris. Why didn't you tell me until today for just that one season? <laughs> well, speaking, speaking of just for today, uh, everybody remember that today released the second to last episode of season one. So episode, I believe it's 13, has released and dropped as of today. So Yeah, I'm almost finished, finished listening to it. <laughs> so, all right. So here, here we are. This is post season one. Uh, I people that are listening to this for the first time on YouTube or on Anchor, you're obviously by the time this drops, you will should have finished the first season. So there's not going to be any spoilers here. But for people here listening who may not have caught up on the season, yes, I'm talking about Zach's friend. Uh, there will be some spoilers in this episode, uh, as well as possible spoilers into season two. Uh, this is a one shot that I am doing. Guys, I apologize right off the bat. I will be DMing this this episode, and this episode is probably going to suck if you're a rules monger because I don't know the rules. <laughs> <laughs> I go by the rules. <laughs> I go by the rule of cool, but the main reason I wanted to do this is I kind of wanted to do a little extra for for everybody to get excited for season two. And the other reason is I wanted to make sure I gave Zach a chance to not be a DM for at least one game. So. <laughs> give Zach a break. <laughs> yeah, I, always, I, love being, I like being a DM. Yeah. All right, well... <laughs> Let me go ahead and set the scene for you guys here. Debaj is out monster hunting. He is learning his craft and his heritage. So he will not be involved in this story arc either. Um, Don't you lie. He's out drinking somewhere. Probably and nailing Angela in many different ways. <laughs> How many ways can you nail a dwarf? I don't know. He, he's waiting to see if he makes another ugly kid like you made. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Or, or, right. or trying to avoid it. It's like, wait, how, did, how did he make his kid? Was it doggy style? We can't do that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, after the eight-month time skip, Chris, I got a surprise for you. All right. Well, good, because this is a couple months after the, the final battle of, of season one. Like and three. Yeah, we'll, we'll say three. Sure. All right. Um, and what's going on is... Uh, the Lord Regent uh, Gary has decided to um, send you guys out because of rumor being heard from this new threat, this Zaki Chan. Uh, coming from the north, there is rumor of a, uh, a group of, uh, of sailors that are setting up a gateway Basically, think of it in, in real life terms. Think of it as like the Coast Guard opening up the channel for the Navy to come through. Uh -huh. There is rumors that Jed Zaki's Armada is not far away and he's got scout ships coming in trying to make sure the way is clear for his landing and his invasion. I like it. So you guys are sent out on one of the Black Sail Tall ships, uh, captained by Captain Meredith Squallmate. With the orders to investigate and, if possible, remove this threat. So, in other words, sink the scouts. So, you guys all are right, all so... 
technically we're, we're right now trying to slow down his advance. You're trying to find out if he if they have reached the borders as of yet with the scouts, and yes, stop the scouts from opening the channel. Okay, that like is your Panama main, Canal, basically a Panama Canal. Yeah, that is your guys' main goal. Stop it if you can, but at least report back whether the rumors are true. <coughs> okay. That's why he's not. That's why he didn't send the whole Black Sails fleet. He just sent one ship, but it is the biggest ship of the fleet. It is. Uh, it's the one that uh, that Jarrell would have used as a bathtub. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> we have Jarrell's ship. That's oh, I love. I'm gonna love it. <laughs> Let's wreck it. Yeah, I'm just gonna write Argos was here. <laughs> All right. On board the ship, you find uh, uh, a typical standard crew. Yeah, think of think of uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, or or whatever the case may be. You know, uh, hands on deck, scrubbing the deck, uh, uh, you know, pulling, hoisting the sails and, 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 you know, typical things that happen on deck of a, of a ship. Um, you see the captain at the wheel standing there and behind her, you see a person dressed all in clown, but he is towering over her. You cannot see his face in any way, shape or form. It is covered by the shadows of the hood, but he kind of gives off an impression of he is not necessarily the first mate of the ship but more like almost like a mage advisor to the ship wow. you almost get the impression that the winds that may not blow from from nature are blown by him and during the uh during the voyage you also notice something else of actually everybody give a perception check except ren as i get rid of my cat All right, I I got a six. All right, I got eight. I got a seventeen. Seventeen. Okay, so you see it. Well, that's all I got. It's you two, right? And and Ren. Okay, so mm -hmm. all right, uh, one person doesn't see it at all or doesn't care. Actually, would be probably more. Thing. I'm probably just sitting on a barrel, smoking a pipe. <laughs> <laughs> The, uh, the other person, Argos, you notice tied to the main mast is a woman. Uh, you can't really tell because her, her face is kind of covered over by, by her hair and, and, a, uh, and you know, a neckerchief kind of tied around the hair. She's kind of leaning down like she's still knocked out. But essentially, from what you gather is before uh, you guys had taken off for this voyage... Uh, they found a stowaway slash thief who was trying to make off with food. And uh, she was caught, she was beaten, and she was tied to the mast for the captain and crew to handle at their leisure later. Just wanted to make it bloody apparent that Ren's character is there. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Argos has looked at this character. Time. Yeah, Argos, as you, as you take notice to it, this will be the opportunity for Ren to explain your character. How far I, up she is to the mass, like tied to the post, or she, she's just tied to the to the base of the of the uh, thing. You oh, know, okay. she, they're 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 not hanging her or 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 you know drawn in quarter or anything. She's she's literally like sitting on the deck with her back against the mass, and they've got the rope around her and the mast. Okay, just sit on the barrel and stare and watch them. <laughs> so my ahead. So they can't see my face so go ahead Ren, uh, let everybody know what your character looks like and who you are okay um she is a high elf she's tall and fairly thin she's about five seven and she has very long orange red hair and uh, probably can't see her eyes right now because um, she's looking down, um, contemplating and plotting how she's going to escape. <laughs> um, but she has green eyes. And she's dressed mostly in black uh, with probably a few hints of red here and there. And she definitely is giving off an aura of um not happy <laughs> by the mat she, she's been beaten and tied to a mast 
yeah. probably not being treated well by the crew because, you know, who likes a thief? But uh, she's still dressed. She's so, still dressed. Yeah. Okay, good. That means the pirates didn't, that they're not pirates. Well, they're not pirates, but you got to remember, they're also captained by a woman. A woman's not going to, you know, accept rape on her ship. <laughs> so... <laughs> Now, if it was a, now if I would have made yeah, her clothes were off, I would have interfered yeah. and put her clothes back on. <laughs> yeah, if the captain was Mark instead of Meredith, there might be a completely different set of character. <laughs> uh, well, I'm just gonna like like keep my eyes on Argos. Right. See what so I just so All right. do I Ar- see the uh, half? Argos, give me another perception roll. All right, see if I notice his his character. Um, I rolled a dirty nineteen. You notice the uh, the black mage standing behind the captain, holding a pipe, and you get the impression that he's intently staring at you. Oh, so I'm the black mage. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Mysterious hooded man watches. From my you head. still can't see his face. You still can't see his features, but you get the distinct impression that his attention is completely on you. Mm. Mm, interesting circumstances. I wonder what the Bosch is doing right now. Yeah. I said to myself. <laughs> Jump cut to uh, the Bosch jerking off in the woods. <laughs> <laughs> There's really no monsters around here. I should have brought Angelo with me. <laughs> Smash cut back to the ship. <laughs> I wonder what... I look at I'm the... I'm just saying, like... God damn it, Kurt. You made me bring DeBaj into this story anyway, and it was supposed to not be about him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to command Kurt to mop the floor. Oh, oh! Oh wait, is he a captain though? Yeah, like I said, he he's he's definitely in the ear of the captain. So it didn't necessarily come from the captain, but you could pretty much guess that it came from somebody of high authority on the ship. I see, I see, I see. Um, well, wait, 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 wait! I don't, I don't know that he's ordering me to mop the floor, right? Or he's ordering me to mop the floor. I'm ordering you to. Ah, I see you mistaken me. I'm not one of your crew. I'm a mercenary hired to deal with whatever problem is overseas. You have my spear, but that's all you have. And you okay. have my mop. A, uh, your bong? <laughs> your mop. <laughs> <laughs> a, a, uh, a swab hand comes up and says, begging your pardon, sir. Uh, but this man is also a... a, a crowned prince of Del Snow just in case you don't know sir I know who he is very well alright he looks He looks at you Argos and he goes I tried to help and then I'm just going to walk away and stand back up behind the captain Hey, I am the guest of this ship, so I am not mopping. Another uh, another deckhand turns around and says, Hey, you see how we treat the last guest? Just do what you're told and shut up. And he's pointing to the uh, the high elf tied to the mast. <laughs> and then I wonder, what, is this, what has this elf done to be tied up to the mast? Tried to steal our stores of food. Is that so? And then I look at the elf. Has the elf eaten? Who cares? All right, I'm going to walk up to the elf. What's that? I'm going to walk up to the elf. Okay. What was your character's name, uh, Ren? Um, Sevosin. Sevosin. All right, Sevosin, you... Kind of have this impression that this uh, this uh, aura is coming towards you. This 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 person clouded in black 
it kind of catches your attention to lift your head and look and you see like i said the the for lack of a better term the black mage of the ship walking towards you yeah okay what do you guys do i mean right now you're uh, out at sea nothing uh, oh I, do. This is gonna, uh, I didn't know if there was going to be more narration um yeah <laughs> she uh she looked gonna, does she have a thing covering her face or no no they didn't gag her or anything they 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 beat her pretty well where she stayed kind of uh out of it for most of the the beginning of this voyage like i said you guys are a couple days in uh, they they have fed her and watered her but it was like maggoty bread and stagnant water what they, they they're obviously not caring about her general health they just don't want her to die yet uh, well i'm okay. gonna kneel down and ask her is she does she feel okay okay so kneel down and ask her if she's okay Role play. <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry. Go, go ahead. Do, do what you do. <laughs> Are you feeling all right? Um, her head lifts a little bit, and um, one eye kind of opens up and looks at you. And even though she's beaten and like her nose is bloody, and there's like blood on the corners of her mouth and all that. That eye that's staring at you has such lethal intensity behind it. All she says is, you come any closer, I'll bite your nose off. And I'm going to stare at you. And you're going to see a very strange feeling as I stare at you. Like a feeling coming, a vibe off me that you've never felt before. Who, who's this? Is it the mage who's staring at me? Yeah, the black mage yeah. who's been unnamed as of as of now, but this is this is uh this is Zach's character right now, who who was the black mage or the right hand of the captain on the ship. Gotcha. And he's staring at me and I'm getting this strange vibe coming mm -hmm. off of like, you. Like one that you probably never felt in your entire life. What is the vibe like? Is it darkness? Is it spiky? Is it watery? <laughs> you don't know. You never, it's don't it's don't you never <laughs> Just describe your energy. <laughs> um, Are you making me feel high, man? <laughs> <laughs> what is this feeling? Is it like creamy peanut butter or like chunky peanut butter? <laughs> yeah. Is oh my there God. fluff involved? Is it raspberry jam? <laughs> it feels similar to divine energy. Oh. You're feeling an otherworldly power. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Um oh. her the look in her eye softens a little bit. Um it 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 doesn't become fearful or apologetic but it more shifts into one of curiosity all right now i'm gonna pull out a, like a little container of water and hand it to her and as you do so you hear from the crow's nest debris ahead starboard english please <laughs> right side it's the right side of the ship I'm gonna look over to the become back. a sail. <laughs> right side is um, starboard, port side is left. Uh, All right, guys, you hey, guys can see what's going on. Um, roll perception. Yep, roll perception. See if you see the three. Ooh, uh, dirty 13. twenty. Thirteen, dirty twenty, and Ren. Oh, I actually get to roll. Can, from from your standpoint, right. you can't see as well, but you can see over the you know over the rails because the rail, the rail instead of it being like built up wood to to a railing, it's uh you know the the flat of the deck and then posts with like roping. Uh, okay, so I can so you can see through it. Gotcha. Um, a twenty side dice. Okay, yeah, you guys all see it. You see a bunch of flotsam, a bunch of destroyed wood and everything else. But what's 
weird about this, and this is more seen by the people with higher the higher perception roles, is there are bodies on these debris, dead bodies that uh, that have rotted away, some to the point of being skeletal. Ooh. So they've been in the water for quite a while. There's nothing. There's nothing fresh here. As it's hitting up against the, uh, you know, the hull of the ship as your guys are passing by and and all, but uh, yeah, bunch of bunch of debris. What you would imagine looks like a ship that's been completely destroyed, and looks like its crew didn't survive whatever it is that destroyed this. No survivors whatsoever. <laughs> You would have thought we would have heard about this. All right. So, uh, Any clues, like a debris, maybe a flag or something? You'd have to search. That would be something that you guys would have to figure out if you want to do. You can move Can on. I roll investigation? Yeah, order. What's that? Oh, I was about to give an order. You can give an order. Stop the ship and... Get the get like a lifeboat ready. There's no need for a lifeboat. The uh, the boat doesn't sit too high off of the water, the main deck, <laughs> that you guys could uh, use uh, long long poke uh, long pikes and and hooks to be able to to haul in the debris and bring it up. Huh. As you see, so there, there's no need for a longboat. Nobody has to disembark from the ship. <clears throat> okay, now I'm gonna. Roll to see know if I see anything. Right now, you see a bunch of you don't even have to roll. You see a bunch of wood, bunch of skeletons, debris of the sea, like seaweed and shit like that, is intercrusted over it. The only way to really find out anything about it, it would be to pluck things out of the water, bring it aboard, and investigate. Right now, all you see is a bunch of shit floating in the in the waves of the ocean. Could right, I well, investigate to see if there's right, any item right of interest? Investigate to see if there's any item of interest? Yeah. You can roll, but you're not really going to catch much about it. Again, it's 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 pieces of wood, like planks, and, and uh, uh, pieces of hull that have been blasted apart. And skeletons intertwined on it, rope kind of dangling off. You may see a bit of a... a, a a sail that has been removed from mass floating a, a little further ahead, you know, uh, seaweed and other debris that would be normal to the ocean kind of intertwined itself onto the things. Anything to indicate the ship, uh, what it's marking are, or whether or not there was anything of value on that ship, that you can't tell from the water. Uh, well, I'm going to come back with the pike insert, like, pretty much trying to fish everything out all right you going to do this by yourself you're going to order the sh- uh the ship to the ship hands to do their jobs <laughs> uh, yeah, or i'm gonna do it as well but tell the ship everybody on the ship to grab a pike all right so Let's you kind of you kind of get the uh the cheesy 60s uh 66 bat and uh penguin crew all of a sudden give the uh yo ho and go and uh Grabbing pikes and hooks and, uh, you know, getting getting set to haul all this uh, onto the main deck to be able to see what's going on. As they do so, and they get all the debris and they're pulling the bodies as well because they're hoping to see if maybe some of the bodies may still have jewelry or markings from their uniforms and stuff. So they're pulling the skeletons and, and, and the rotted bodies up onto the ship as well. This goes on for about an hour before you clear around the boat. Now, there's plenty more, you know, farther away, but it's out of reach of your pikes and all. You'd have to move the ship to get more. So now you've got this pile of debris on the ship. I'm going to look through it. All right. Well, I'm not the captain of the ship, so I can't command the crew anything to do. So I'm just going to use, like, look around and see if I could spot anything. Or... All right. Well, let's do it this way. Uh, Ren is still tied to the mast, so it would be Argos and Zach. Give me a perception roll at disadvantage. And do what? At disadvantage. 
Because there is a lot of shit on this on this deck right now. Um, nineteen and natural twenty. <laughs> you see it. <laughs> he sees it. I just rolled. Uh, since it's disadvantage, I rolled eleven. An eleven. You see it too. The skeleton okay. start the move. I'm gonna pull the... up my two long swords. All right. Uh, and brace yourself. Somebody... Undead are coming aboard. All right, thank you. So I was waiting to see if somebody would then alert the cl- crew. <laughs> <laughs> Coming from the debris, you see a bunch of skeletons and and half rotted. Oh, I don't want to use the term zombies. They're they're still skeletons, but they still have flesh on their bones. I'm gonna blow a ho- my horn to alert the crew that's down below. All right, it's gonna sound like the horn of hell hammer hand. <laughs> All right, roll initiative. All right. How many? The boat or in the water. Natural 20. <laughs> okay. How many mm-hmm. skeletons are there? There are about 20 on the deck. Holy but shit. But you take a look outside the deck or outside the ship, you're starting to see other things starting to swim. Um... I'm going to give the command to free the high elf. All right, a hand goes over, cuts her, cuts her loose, but grabs her before he does. It's we're not finished, lass. Give her her weapons. They're over there next, next to the uh, the, uh, the the secondary line. She can pick it up herself. Don't give me sass, crew member. <laughs> <laughs> she rips her hand away from you, and she takes a step forward, and she just glares. At you, at the um, crewman, okay. before she turns to go and get her swords. That's a good puppet. And he returns back to what he's doing. He's got to help keep the ship under control while half the crew is setting up to, uh, which I got to roll their initiative too. <coughs> oh! oh, God, this is a very unorthodox crew. Where's your roll? I think they'll be going last. <laughs> no! Wow. <laughs> Rule one: The skeletons will go before they do. <laughs> wow! Sloppiest crew in the fleet. Jerks. <laughs> hey, all the skeletons might be dead by the time I get through with them. Maybe, maybe oh. not. Oh. But here's the problem: This is something you have to think about, Zach, from player to player character knowledge. Yes, there are twenty skeletons that you could probably blow away very easily. But in doing so, may reveal who you are. Shit. <laughs> That's why I'm using my two long swords. <laughs> may still reveal it. So think very hard on how you want your character to go, on whether or not your character wants to be revealed at this time. <laughs> right. Well, I rolled a natural for me, so. So, yeah, you go first. Yeah, I rolled a a 13. A 13? Okay, so I got a 20, a 13. Ren, what did you roll for initiative? 13. 13, okay. Ladies first. She goes first because she has, yeah. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) All right. All right, so so the initiative goes Zach, uh, Ren, uh, Kurt, then the skeletons, then the crew. All right, and with my two long swords, I'm going to attack... Two skeletons, two times each. Oh, Jesus. Okay, you get four attacks. Oh, sh- drop the 20. Drop one. No, I drop. Uh, Got to re-roll that. Does a 14 hit? They're skeletons. Yeah, it hits. <laughs> I'll put it, to, I'll put it this way, because this is the first wave of anything you guys are going to face in this. Anything above a 10 is probably going to hit. Oh, so oh. I, I roll an 11, a 14, an 18, and a 17. All right, roll for damage. All right, I rolled 10 for 11, 
for the first one. Wait, hold on, wait, no, that's 10. Yeah, so technically 20 for the first skeleton. Okay. And 15 for the second one. All right. The first one shatters the pieces. The second one is still together. However, <clears throat> you notice that the first one that you shattered, its pieces are now sliding over to the one you have not destroyed yet. And almost seems oh. like it's interconnecting to each other. Oh. Exotic. And it is Ren's turn. Um, Sevosin, she looks for the closest skeleton, but she's also keeping an eye on that um, crewman who got into her face earlier, telling her that they're not finished with her yet. So, uh, She's going to keep an eye on him, and she's going to attack the closest skeleton with her swords. All right. And, and she has two short swords. Do I use a d20 twice for that, or...? Yes, one for each of the swords. Okay. <clears throat> Got a 14 and an 18. That'll hit. Now, roll your damage. <clears throat> Is that also a 20? No, it should be whatever your short your short swords. I think is one d eight plus one d six or d six one d six per sword plus I believe it is your strength modifier. Okay. Um, one second. She's a rogue. Um, should she be using her dexterity since uh, she could okay, try yeah. precise attack? Yeah, because she's a rogue, it would be dexterity modifier. So it would be 1d6 plus whatever your dexterity modifier is, like okay. probably like a plus four or something. Hit them hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, I got a five and dexterity. Oh. Is 20. No, no, not the de not the not the, the the full stat, not the dexterity. Underneath dexterity, oh, five, sorry. Plus number. Okay, yeah, plus so five. Gotcha. So you got ten on that first hit, and then uh, do the damage for your second sword. Okay. Six um, plus five. So that's eleven. So you've done a total of twenty-one damage. Again, the skeleton explodes right in front of you. But, and I want to paint. I want to paint this in a way that you guys will understand. So forgive this modern uh, modernization. But think about Terminator Two: Judgment Day, the T one thousand. Every time oh, he got yeah. exploded or whatever, yeah. then all of a sudden the liquid would start trying to reform on itself. Yeah, I picture these, perfectly. These, these bones and all seem to be gravitating to the closest skeleton to it and attaching itself to almost like armor and extra arms and extra legs like it, it's you know in front of both Zach and Ren's character these 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 skeletons they've already des destroyed seem to be transforming onto the next skeleton closest to it so which one did she attack she attacked one closest to her so <laughs> we haven't really it, it's a it's a boat there's not really much damage so i would imagine it's one that got by you to get to attack her while you were attacking yours and then i would imagine more port would be argos with more skeletons coming from there because these guys are coming from the 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 refuge that you guys pulled aboard and they're kind of coning out to the ship okay um so they're at the port and starboard side or just port side they're all over the ship you have a pile of debris in the middle of the deck, and these guys are coming from that and just kind of coning out to take over the ship and kill everything on board. And they're still on the ship, okay. Oh, of course. It's the ship, and they're on the water. Let me see if I got something here for that. Hmm. Okay, um, which is a skeleton that's becoming beefier? Uh, there's one right by uh, that <coughs> character, and there's one right by the uh, the high elf. What's uh, I'm pretty sure I'm in range. 
Mm. I'm sure you are. I mean, the ship, the ship. Yeah, you're be... right next to me. Let's put it this way: you guys could use your, uh, you know, your your movements to go from one side of the ship to the other. I mean, it's not that wide. Is there a skeleton that are they're massed together? Like yeah. In group. Okay, yeah. so one right in front of uh, Zach's character, and one right in front of uh, Ren's character, because they're the only two that have had uh, a skeleton destroyed and start to attach itself to another skeleton. All right, perfect. So I'm gonna move forward to the biggest skeleton I see, which is which is my nearest biggest skeleton, Sin or Zach? One closest to me. Yeah, closest. Right. Zach, take... Zach would be in the center of the of this triangle. I would okay. I would put Ren more towards the starboard side and you're more towards the port. Got it. Uh, and then I'll attack the big skeleton. All right. I hmm. the skeletons are holding up against the one. I cast I'll cast green flame blade and then my spear ignites in green fire and I charge at the big skeleton. Ooh, and that is a dirty twenty one. Okay, that'll hit. That would hit green flame blade, and I'm gonna add the damage. Uh, one d eight. That's a one. Oh, well, sorry. That's that's for that's for booming blade. <laughs> Wrong dice. Okay. Roll that one, and bop, 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 bop. green flame blade does one d eight. Okay. So one d eight. Strength six. Seven. I'll do seven damage. That's including the green flame blade on the first okay. skeleton that I see, the big one. Okay. So now it's going to activate the second effect. That fire is going to leap to the nearest of uh, uh, nearest skeleton. Um, which will it be? Like any skeleton next to the big one. Okay. Yeah. Um, Again, they're kind of all right? over the place, but the the, the deck it the, the 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 width of the ship is not that wide. I'd say it's about forty five feet from from you know uh, port to starboard. So okay. so there there's not a whole lot of room on this deck, and there's a lot of bodies around. You'll you'll hit somebody close to that skeleton. All right, then I'll hit the skeleton, whatever the nearest skeleton on the right. And I just realized I get to roll another d eight since I'm on level twelve. For green flame blade. Oh crap! Oh, I run. That's an eight damage then. Um. Alrighty, and then I am going to cast thunder wave at the big guy. See if I could push everybody, all the skeletons, out in that range, the fifteen uh, feet range, out of the ship to okay. give us some breathing room. Um. They're going to do a constitution saving throw. The big skeleton one will have a disadvantage on that saving throw because of my Eldritch Strike passive as an Eldritch Knight. All right. And uh, what is the DC? The DC would be... Mm, I have it right here. Scrolling up. The DC is 14. 14, 14. DC. Yeah. Okay. And they all fail. Ooh, so what happens? <laughs> you they take the full effect of your thunder wave. Awesome. Are they are they I mean, flying out of the ship? What what did you say, Zach? I mean take the thunder wave. Uh let me see here. They take two D eight. Eight of them take full effect of the thunder wave. Alright, let me roll my two D eights then. Uh, you know, I'm gonna feel like Joe playing as this guy, rolling multiple sets. Of keep, Ooh, keep bragging! You don't know what I have in store. They take 15 <laughs> damage. 15 damage, and they go bla blasting off 30 feet back. If I remember from uh, from Thunderclap or Thunderwave, right? Uh, let me see on a ba -ba -ba -ba, miss. Mm -hmm, or push they get away from back. Back. At least ten feet, but I think it's thirty. Um, it's ten feet. They're moved ten feet away. That's fine. Eight of them go blasting off of the the ship over the rails back into the water. Some of them blasting away into pieces. Oh, that's so cool! I just threw men to begin to just like start firing arrows into the water. 
at the ones that are in the water. Okay. They respond to that. The skeletons do not attack. Instead, they are forma- formulating into a line. They are literally building themselves a wall between mm-hmm. you and the bow of the ship. And okay. I, I want perception rolls from my three players. Point two. To natural 20. And Ren? Like, is the line on the boat, or is it in the water? What's that? Is the line, are they doing the line on the boat, or in the water? No, oh, they're, they're cutting you off from the bow of the ship, so it's, it's on the boat. But what you notice is past them, dark clouds are heading towards the boat. And from these clouds is ribbons of rain where it almost looks like this boiling in f- wet fog is now heading towards the front of the ship. Hmm. And as you notice that, you also notice on the bow of the ship, you see green skin, scaly creatures with faces of fish starting to crawl on the b- onto the bow of the ship looking at you. And, and I roll for... Faces, and when I say okay, faces, I'm saying... I'm staying hey, up. Hey, Chris, hold on, hold on, hold on. My girlfriend yep. is about to leave for work. I gotta kiss her goodbye. Okay. Yes, I, I, I want to. Well, wow, he looks yeah. so small. Like That's really cool when, it, when Argos casts his thunder wave. I just imagine him, like, stomping his, uh, his spear on the floor like Odin. And just... <laughs> I'm gonna actually put my long swords away. I pull out my great battle axe. All right. Again, giving away more uh, more things. As a matter of fact, at this moment, if he's going to do that, Argos, roll me a perception roll, please, to see if you not only see this battle axe come out, but if you recognize it. Advantage or disadvantage? Neither. Clean roll. <laughs> A natural one. Oh, you have no idea who that, where that battle axe came from, and no, you've never seen it before in your life. <laughs> <laughs> However, I'm like, oh yeah, I get to see who it is, and then wait a minute, two long swords. How big is this character? About six foot five. I'm gonna go ahead and rip out his fucking cloak. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're really gonna worry about his cloak when you got a whole bunch of Sahagin and Mer folk climbing the bow of the ship right behind the line of skeletons. Yes, with this <laughs> audacious gale of a storm coming directly at you. All right, I'll focus on the storm, but I'm gonna and figure out who that is. is where I'm gonna stop this one right now because I got to go pick up my girl from work. For you guys watching the video, you guys are going to be getting a commercial. Right now for my buddies at Comic Collections. And when we come back, we will continue the tale of the terror on the high seas. Till then. Awesome. Enjoy. <laughs> All, right. All right. I'm just going to make myself something. Hi, this is Dave from the Comic Collection, the ultimate comic store here in Feasterville, Pennsylvania, which is a suburb of Northeast Philadelphia. Come and see all of the great stuff we have here at the Comic Collection, including action figures, Vinyl, CDs, Dungeons and Dragons, Magic the Gathering, Pokemon, back issues, action figures, old action figures as well, statues, and of course, let's not forget comic books. Come visit us at the Comic Collection at 83 Bustleton Pike, Feasterville, PA, 19053. Right next to Northeast Philadelphia. Come visit us. We'll look forward. And yes, we are open during this pandemic thing. What's up, guys? I hope you enjoyed that little break, that little intermission. Where we left off, our little crew was sailing across the seven seas to check on a scouting party and wound up getting attacked by the undead and some of the denizens of the deep sea. When last we left off, Mr. Argos was finishing off his attack. So, Mr. Argos, take it away. 
Definitely. I'm pretty sure, like, for us, it would be, like, this intermission for us was an hour, but for them, it's going to be, I'm pretty sure you're going to edit it, so it's going to be, like, five, like... <laughs> it's a second. minute. It, 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 <laughs> yeah. It, yeah, there was a commercial there. <laughs> <laughs> commercial for a comic book shop. Now I'm back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, so how many did I manage to knock off any skeletons off the ship though when I yeah, did eight. thunder with eight? All right, cool, cool, cool. cool. Since, they, since they all failed their saves, all uh, eight of them <coughs> into the uh, briny deep. Alrighty, um, how many skeletons are left on the ship, and how close are the merfolks approaching us? They are about ten skeletons left, two of which are are mutated skellies that have extra pieces from other skeletons. Uh, the merfolk are about 20 feet behind the line of skeletons climbing up the bow and, and the front sides of the ship. Ooh, how many, how many merfolks are coming? You can't even determine. All right. Um, can I, like, hit one, though? Can you With hit a range one? attack? Yeah, I mean, you could try. There's a couple of heads poking out there. All right, I'm going to poke their heads for poking out their heads. All right. <clears throat> I cast up um I cast an energetic force in my hands and I pointed at at least two skeletons and one merfolk and I cast <laughs> Eldritch Blast. All right. Remind me and the folks at home what Eldritch Blast does. Okay, so Eldritch Blast. <coughs> Pop up Bless my you. little. It is a cantrip spell with a range of 120 feet. Okay. As a beam of crackling energy streaks forward a creature within range. Make a ranged spell attack against the target on hit. The target takes 1d10 force damage. This spell creates more than one beam, beam when you reach a higher level. So since I'm at the 12th level, I shoot three beams. Now, <clears throat> you can say- direct... Um, it's saying I could direct the beams at the same target or different ones. So I must make three separate rolls for the, each of those beams. Attack rolls. Right. So but there's, I'm, there's, no, there's no spell save or anything I have to worry about. It's just if you hit, you hit. If I hit, I hit. Okay. And, oh, okay. I missed two, but one of them is a natural 20. All right. Well, then... Uh... We'll go high or low to be good on on whether that natural twenty was a merfolk. Um, high good. High good. I rolled a six, so you 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 nat twenty one of the merfolk. <laughs> nice. So roll your damage to him. Well, no, it's max damage. So what what was the damage? Um, it's a one d ten. So he takes ten damage. Um, he takes ten damage, and he's got to do a. Athletic save on whether or not he gets blasted off the bow. He rolled an 18. He's fine. He's still hanging on. But he took a hell of a hit, and now he's gurgling at you. <laughs> <laughs> and as I said uh, be- previous, the uh, sands, the beginning of the attack, uh, well, beginning of the break, the uh, skeletons are just creating a perimeter wall and are not attacking. Uh, the merfolk have not gotten into range yet, so there's nothing for them to come into. It is the pirate, or not the pirate, excuse me, the uh, crew's turn. They are going to lob arrows at the oncoming onslaught. I will handle it with one roll here. 13 will hit. Let's see here. I got an idea what I'm going to do next. Two skeletons drop and then start forming onto other skeletons. And three of the merfolk have lost their grip on the bow of the ship. And we are at the beginning of initiative. All right. I'm going to look at the wall of skeletons and I'm going to do a thunder wave. Another thunder wave. Go ahead. Again, you get a save on this, right? Yeah, you have to do a constitution save. All right. All right. Uh, Let's see. Out of that, there was 10 guys. 
four of them have failed. All right, so. Well, that's 12 damage. Still up, but looking pretty haggard. All right, and I'm going to now attack. Attack the one, three of the four ones that I hit with thunder damage. All right. My great axe. Like one each time. Okay. All right. That's a natural 20. Dead. That is a dirty 25. Dead. No, that's the hit. They don't have many hit points left. If you hit, they're dead. Unless you roll a natural one and you're damaged, they're done. 30, 24. Yeah. The, okay. Three out of the four that you've thunder waved have shattered. But again, the bones are now crawling to other standing skeletons, which are making them even more menacing, giving them more of a chance to attack. And they're cl- still closing in their ranks, trying to keep the line secured while the main force is crawling up onto the deck from. Uh, the way I can get an attack off to me on the bones that are moving towards the other skeletons. I don't see why not. They're mindless bones. They're just following a, a, for lack of a better term, a magical spell that has them compelled to go to the nearest still standing skeleton. All right. I'm going to hit with another thunder wave to blast it off the ship. Okay. Not sure. I'm not even sure if they could save that because they're not conscious beings. <laughs> Uh, we'll give it a shot. That's a fail. Ooh, that's a crit fail. Them bones go flying. <laughs> and that will end my turn. How many skeletons are left in this wall of theirs? Five. Total. Five. We're almost through. Keep fighting. You also notice overhead the uh, the curtain of, of darkness is coming closer, ever closer to the bow of the ship. Mm, that cloud seems to be getting closer and closer. It could be the source of this magic. Oh. If things get the worse, stay close to me, Argos. Hmm. There's nowhere else to go. That is a natural 20. Holy shit. You guys see a large harpoon come out of the curtain of rain and completely spear Captain Meredith square in the chest and blast her off the aft of the boat. Fuck. Gone. (laughs) (laughs) And that was a natural roll, by the way. My character's jaw drops, like. <laughs> so it is a ship covered in the veil of shadows. Jack, uh, knock it off. All right, Ren's turn. Oh, man. Um, there is just... Explosives? <laughs> there is absolutely no chance to try to save the captain. I mean, you can go in for a swim and see if you could pull her back onto the boat and pull a uh, whaler freaking spear out of her chest. <laughs> I mean, is she alive? <laughs> Probably not. If she is now, she wouldn't be by the time you guys got to her. Wow. Oh, oh man. Okay, that changes my plans. Um <laughs> She is no longer the captain of the ship. Let's just put it that way. (laughs) (laughs) Somebody's about to get a promotion. (laughs) Um, Let's see. Could I attempt to look at that black cloud and try to gain some kind of sense from it? Like some um, information, huh? Give me an insight check. Okay, will that be D20? That would be a D20. 
on your character sheet, it, it would be under your saves where uh, where it says perception or not perception insight, and then it'll tell you what bonuses you get to it. Okay, so I got an eight on the d twenty, and yeah, I'm also gonna roll insight check. Okay, so will I. No. Okay. Seventeen. All right. I roll to do. A 16. A 16, a 17, and uh, an 8. What's your bonus to it? What's the insight? Six. Plus? I just found it. Yeah, it's a 6. Your insight is plus 6? Jesus, I turned an 8 into a 14. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You guys are just getting the radiation of pure evil. However... Unlike uh, Ren and Argos, Zach, your character is realizing that this is something he's not felt in a very long time. What do you mean? Like, he's got a feeling of evil that has not been felt upon this world for centuries. I'm going to tell everybody on that's on the ship to stand behind me. Are you going to reveal who uh, yourself when you make that command? Because otherwise, quite. why would anybody stand behind you? <laughs> I'm technically now the captain of the ship. The promotion has not happened yet. I never said you were the executive <laughs> officer. I just said you were an advisor. <laughs> but okay, that's then I'm just going to walk out in front of everybody with my group. With my great battle axe. Okay. So you see, you see this black hooded figure with a giant battle axe walking forward, basically into the cr uh, crowd of skeletons. And you notice the skeletons make way for him. They do not try to stop him from crossing the line. The ship or the, the character? The character. He's getting on their ship? No, he's walking through their line. Oh, fuck. They are not stopping him. They are not attempting to stop him. And this is me they're talking about. Mm-hmm. Ah, oh, okay. Though. They're still holding the line on you guys, but they allowed him to walk past. What's going on here? Bum, bum, bum. Maybe it is a jam. <laughs> Interesting. So what's what's okay? So what's going to happen now? He's walking the line. I mean, well, what's happening now is it's still Ren's turn. Oh, yep. okay, okay, okay. <laughs> All right, um, I'm going to try something. Um, she is going to shout at, okay, so she felt like this evil menace coming from um, this to cloud. Qu to, to, to quote a movie, it's like, it feels like all the happiness has been sucked out of the world. Like, it's <laughs> oppressive evil is what you feel. You can't put your finger on, like, Exactly like if it felt like, you know, standing in front of the devil, for example, or if it just felt like in the presence of, of people with really p impure intent, just you, you can't, you can't, you can't judge the level of evil, but you know that it's just pure evil. Okay. So similar that's to the. Wrong, that's what we did. <laughs> <laughs> Who has the one ring? <laughs> no, no, no. Well. Well, so, well, no, I, I was going to say Melo, um, Mel, Melkor, but uh, is this guy as bad as Melkor or Sauron? Melkor is my, my Sauron's <laughs> boss, by the way. <laughs> I know who Melkor is. Voldemort. I know who it is. It's Morturn, the god of death. Ah, okay, Morturn is the Melkor. Okay, good, good. 
Now all of a sudden you see popping out a guy with like curly hair that's all whacked out and funny clothes, and he goes, "Oh, it's me, chilling with the weasel." Yeah, buddy. That's right. Polly Shore is the root of all evil in this game. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> I just pictured Cicero from Skyrim just with a clown outfit, you know. <laughs> Wait, who popped out? Polly Shore. Like, seriously, or are you just joking around? I'm just joking around. No. Okay. I was going to say, I'm, gonna, I'm going to cleave that person in half with my axe. <laughs> Don't mow on my grindage, buddy. <laughs> okay, so this guy, he just walked past the skeletons and the skeletons did not attack him. Correct. And he's walking towards this the, black. Uh, he's talking he's walking towards the bow of the ship which right now is still covered in merfolk and, and towards where the uh, storm for lack of a better term, is still heading straight for you guys. Okay. Um, I'm not going to obey what he said for everyone to get behind him, naturally. Instead, I am going to... Um, let's see. I'm going to skip targeting the skeletons, and I'm just going to target... Um, that generalized black cloud that fired the um, harpoon out. You're just going to randomly attack a cloud? A storm? Huh? You're just going to randomly attack a storm? Yeah, I'm going to try to attack a storm. I don't know what's in there. Something solid must be in there if it can fire a harpoon. Okay. What are you going to attack with? A firebolt. All right. Roll your attack. <laughs> Zach's showing he's thrilled with this story so far. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> yeah, 17. And... I'm so excited. Do I add a modifier to that for my intelligence? or? I think that I'm not good. sure. The spell should tell you. Uh, I think I think so. Um, she's because she's making a tire roll on it, so she should apply a modifier. Let's see here. Oh. Range of sound. Oh, let's make a ranged spell attack. Blah blah blah. Tactic. D10. Fire damage. Ah, uh, doesn't say. I'll just go. I'll, I'll, for the sake of argument, I'll say yes. You, you your intelligence modifier. Yeah, because uh, from what I'm reading and from what I've read, I, some cantrips you are able to in, in spells. Okay. It's a homebrew people listening at home. I'm allowed to bend the rules. So, <laughs> if these rules are wrong, they're wrong, but we're doing it this way anyway. All right. So I got a 22 then. All right. Well, regardless of whether you got a high roll or not, I need you to tell me if high or low is good because you are still taking a shit shot into a storm. Um, you want me to tell you whether it's good? Yeah, tell me if high a uh, high number is good or bad. Um, for me or for the storm? What? <laughs> Yeah, I'm rolling a six-sided die. Tell me if you want to, if you're betting on four, five, six, or one through three. Um, one through three. All right. You shoot out your thunderbolt. It goes blasting out and just off into the atmosphere. Does it illuminate anything along its way? Give me a perception roll. Oof. Got a five plus six, 11. 
Yeah, you're not really sure. You thought you might have seen some shadows in it, but you weren't exactly sure what it was. And now we come to Argos. Argos, are you going to try to spear whatever's in the storm? <laughs> you want to take a blind shot? I could take a blind shot, but uh, I'm, actually concerned for, uh, I'm actually concerned for the captain. Is she alive? She's off the ship. Again, by the time you would even find her, she'd probably be dead if she's still alive right now. Yeah. But again, let me throw a whaler uh, harpoon at you. Hit you through the chest. Let me know if you survive. <laughs> I mean, we got healing potions. Uh, <laughs> let's just <laughs> patch that up like a flex tape. Let's <laughs> eat sensu bean. What's that? Uh, I said, J just eat a sensu bean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All righty. So what I'm going to do is... Um, Throw my spear at the mist and see if I hit something. All right. But how far away is the storm from us? No one's ever told me. Oh, it's getting closer and closer. It's a it's a good it's a good twenty feet from the from the tip of the bow. Oh, I actually hit it then. You guys are sailing straight into that storm, or the storm is sailing straight into you, one way or the other. You guys are on a head-on collision. I mean, without. This... I know exactly what I'm gonna do. This D20, because it's pretty as hell. There you go. Hand me a soda, please. Alrighty. That is a dirty 20. Okay, so you were throwing your... I know you have the ability to call your spear back, but you have thrown your spear as far into the storm as you can. With a dirty 20, which is a good roll, just like Ren's last roll. But again, I've got to do it. High or low to be good. Um, I'm taking would, a blind shot into a storm. What did she say last time? Did she say uh, high good She's, or high low? She said low good. Low good. And she got a low or she got a high? She got a high. That's why she didn't hit you. Mm, give me high good. Well, that's a six. Fuck, I should have said low good. You hear a thunk from your spear. Hmm. It sounded like it hit something wooden. All right. I'm going to... Let's see. You know what? It's a mist, right? It's a mist? It's a storm. It's, 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 a, it's a squall storm out at sea where it looks like curtains of rain are obscuring the view. But it, it, it's a storm. It's not a mist. It's not like a fog. Although it is kind of creating a fog because of how hard the rain is coming down. But... All right, so I'm just. Can I thunder wave the the cloud and the storms apart? No, no. Do you, I mean, like, go outside when it's raining and blow an air horn at at the at the sky and see if it'll <laughs> blow a hole in the storm. It, I mean, well, it's a storm. It, you know, you're, you're you're, for lack of a better term, you're you're heading headfirst into a hurricane. All right, all right. I'll use my bonus <laughs> action to recall my spear. Okay. It teleports back to my hand, and there's still skeletons on the boat, right? Oh, yeah, and there's merfolk hanging off the bow. Yeah, we got to focus on these guys at the moment. Otherwise, we're just leaving ourselves open. I point my three fingers at... Hmm, I'm going to point... You know what? I'm going to point my hands at one merfolk and hit him with a tri-beam blast, basically an Eldritch blast. And let's see... Ooh, okay. I'm going to add uh, in total that with... Does a 12, can the 12 hit a, a one more folk? No. Okay. That one attack misses. A 13. Still no. 15. That will hit. Okay. I'm going to cast another Eldritch Blast on the same guy. All right. Okay, um, I hit him once, and one of them is a natural one. Ooh. All right, so uh, how much damage you got out of it? Okay, since it's a D8, uh, no, D10, sorry, it's actually a D10. Um, D10, and roll two D10s out of the total of the attacks, and... All 
Where's the other dice? Where's the other dice? Aha. Okay. So damage total is 19. All right. Let me do a dexterity on that Murph, folks. See if he, 19 he falls damage. off the side of the boat. <laughs> He's still alive. He just got blasted off the boat. Now I've got another issue for you. Because you did roll a natural one, and as we all know, a natural one deserves to be punished in some way, shape, or form. So, give me an attack roll, please. Me or? Yeah, you. Uh, oh, attack roll. Got it. This blast still happened, even though it's a natural one. But we're going to see who it, who it went Fifteen. for. Fifteen. Fifteen. I'm, yeah, I'm adding the modifier for the spell. Okay. Zach, high or low to be good? High is good. High is good? Yep. What is your armor class? 19. You get hit with an Eldritch Blast, but it just bounces off of you. Uh, do I take any damage? No, because your armor class was higher than his attack. <laughs> but the, uh, <laughs> the, the, the random uh, crit one went your way, hit you, and bounced off of you. <laughs> I'm just gonna turn around and look, <laughs> and I'm just gonna point my finger and say, "What? It was him that the mer uh, at one of the mer folks." <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna shake my head as I'm tying a rope to an arrow. All right, now the mer folk are finally coming over the edge, and the only I'm gonna let's see out of. Let's see. Two of them have made it over, and they're going to square off against Zach, who is by himself coming with a trident attack. That is a dirty 20, so that will hit, and the second guy will miss. Bonus. You will take six points of stabbing damage. All right. Skeletons still do not move. Other other merfolk are still climbing up. The storm moves a little closer. The ship's complement starts lobbing off again. Ooh, God. All right. How many is that going to affect? Eleven merfolk go off the boat, and two more skeletons blow apart. And now, I would like, at the top of the round, I would like perception rolls, because I know you guys are still all looking to where the captain is. Twenty-four. All right, 24, and what was everybody else's? 15. 15 still works. Ren? Um, let's see here. Perception plus 6, and I got 17 plus 6. Okay, so yeah, okay, everybody sees this. Right next to the wheel that controls the rudder on a box and uh, some rope over top, you see a short, squat old man, kind of balding, hood pulled up, wrapped in a red uh, red hood with uh, green trimming down the the center of the robe and on the cuffs of the sleeves, and he's just smiling at all of you. Well, like, yep, yep, yep. Like a what? What ship is he on? He's on your ship. He's sitting right next to the uh, to the main steering wheel of the ship. Is that where I'm at, or am I in the front of the ship? You're in the bow. He's at the aft. Uh, somebody deal with him. Is he one of ours? You don't know. He's just sitting there smiling and watching what's going on. Well, I don't know the ship's crew here. You there, mage. Is he one of yours? I don't know. Does anyone know this guy? As I asked, as we were just fighting. You say that you <laughs> said extremely loud? Yeah, I say it loud. He goes, I know me. 
But the question is, do I know you? <laughs> well, the question is, I do know myself. The question is, don't you think you have more important things to worry about than me right now? You seem very suspicious. <laughs> That's like Mike. Look, do you want to save this ship or do you want to have a conversation? Because we can only do one at a time. Well, I can do both. Why can't you? Apparently <laughs> not. <laughs> as tell- Argo says, as well, fighting with skeletons and men folks. But well, I'll tell you what. I will give you an opportunity to ask me any question you want for the next five minutes right after I do this. And with that, he snaps his fingers as you enter the storm. And as you enter the storm, as he snapped his fingers, all the skeletons literally just drop into piles of bone. And the merfolk let go of the front of the bow and disappear back into the depths. You've got five minutes before your next round. If you want to talk, now's the time. Who are you? Are you the source of this magic? Source of it? No, no, I'm not the source of it. I'm just watching it happen. Observer. Or you like came... a chronicler, if you will. How did... What kind of magic do you possess to instantly disable the enemy? I don't. I have the ability to see the past, present, and future all at once and all at the same time. I know every which way this battle will come outcome. And I know whether you will live or die by it. And I'm curious to see which choices you make. Hmm. What must we do so that we all survive? That would be cheating if I told you that. You said any question. I I also said that I am an observer. I am not an active participant. I cannot stop your destiny. You yourself can choose which paths you take. Hmm. Is the captain alive? No, her destiny laid upon a different path. One that caused her to have to be in front of that infernal bolt. That is unfortunate. Tell me, who is the enemy that is attacking us? There are many enemies in this world, Master Argos. There are those who are without that are coming into this world more and more, such as minor threats like Zaki Chan or Zerg, the the orc necromancer. Oh, Zog. Zog, excuse me. But they, they are minor to the major threats that will be coming to this world very soon. And the Chronicler turns directly to you, Zach, and says, you of all people know what's coming. What's coming? I cannot say. I look at the hooded man. You, if you know what is to come, tell us. Why should I? Because it's right for a god to answer his subjects, isn't it? Malachi the Black. I remove my hood. (laughs) I knew it. But instead of white, black. <laughs> no, white was taken by or taken already by some old man who lives in Middle Earth. <laughs> Malachi. Somehow you seem familiar. I'm glad I didn't hit you with that broom. <laughs> <laughs> I've been watching oh. over you guys since you guys defeated Zog Argos. <laughs> it's good to see you. Well, uh, you guys could survive on your own, and you did. No, yes. we seem to be holding up quite fine. I mean, Chase knew we just met. But Jarrell and Debaj, they're having their own way, and I'm pretty sure they're fine. Huh? Their stories have not ended in this yet, and I must tell you that this young lady here has a role to play in the future to come. We just need to make sure that the barge is fine whenever we get back in. It. 
is happening. They're still after the key? Oh, the key is just but one step to unlock the door to things eternally royally screwed in this realm. This has happened in other realms before when divine intervention was involved. And you are on the cusp of that again here. Are you seeing? I cannot say what your future holds, but I can tell you that you are the only ones that can channel your fate to be anything other than a fate of death and darkness. Remember my words. The choices you make will affect how things happen in this realm. Would the plants here be able to show us what will happen? That I do not know. Well, I thought you know everything. I know all possible outcomes and fates. I do not know the processes in which you have taken. That's why I'm here observing. I am but recording history as it happens. <laughs> so, are you saying the gods are going to return? Who's to say they ever left? Maybe the gods weren't turning their backs on the people. Maybe the people locked the gods away and they're angry. The gods can stay angry. This world doesn't need the gods if they have the demigods. We can protect this world. I'm like them. Well, then maybe you should explain that to them. Any points behind you guys? You guys gonna turn? Uh, see what he's yeah, pointing? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm turning yeah, I'm totally turning around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thirty wow. wooden ships with dove-like wings that span out about eleven feet from the hull of the ships, flying overhead, all bearing the standards. Of Zaki Chan. Just so you know, Zaki Chan's army resembles Viking. Mm -hmm. And as you hear that, you hear the crew of your own ship turning around, looking up, and in fear, and then all of a sudden in jovial laughter, you hear the first mate, the real first mate, turn around and say, Okay, boys! Time for everybody to figure out what the hell they want to do when they die. Talking to us. Ocean, hoist the colors. And as they raise the standards and colors on the black sailed ship, it is marked with the standards of J Zaki Chan. Wait. Anyone who does not bow to Zaki Chan deserves a fate of death. Which ship? What? What? what I'm gonna happen? jump, like run and jump from the ship with my axe and like land on one of their ships. You hit a force field and get blasted back to your own ship. <laughs> <laughs> it is literally like you hit a net wall and just bounce back to the ship. <laughs> So the the crew of the ship that you're on is a turncoat that has turned its allegiance to Zaki Chang. You've got overhead dove flying boats in Viking style with the standards of the, the uh, Zaki Chan ready to or release fire arrows upon the ship. And then you hear <laughs> laughter behind you. I just look at the crew that are laughing. It's not the crew. It's the Chronicler. Who's the Chronicler? The little short guy you've been arguing with for about 10 minutes. Uh, oh, okay, okay. I want you to take a cold, hard look, my friends. He says, this is the future of this realm. This is the future of you if you do not make the changes necessary. And as he says this, you see his eyes start goldening out and slitting cat-like. As he smiles, 
fangs start producing from his wide mouth. Pointed long and his face starts elongating and his skin color starts turning into a chromatic black onyx color. As his body starts contorting, legs get longer, wings start protruding from his from his shoulders and he transforms into a fully grown ancient chromatic black dragon. I look at this chromatic black dragon and I said, and with awe, it's a dragon. <laughs> I'm finally close I'm to a dragon. Animal handling for on the dragon. I got animal give handling. Give me a religious religion roll first. Me? No, Zach. Thirty nineteen. Thirty nineteen. You already know that animal handling is not going to handle the uh, affect this guy because this guy is divine. <laughs> also divine. Exactly. So you know damn right well animal handling is not going to ha- work on him. And sentient. And roll a natural twenty. What's that? Well, if I roll a natural twenty. He's got a natural immunity to that. He's not really a dragon. He just took the form of one. Oh, okay. He's not really a dragon. Right. He's not an animal. He's he's still a uh, Did our crew betray us as well? Yeah. yeah you're, yeah, well, I mean, if you're talking about back in, back in the uh, city with the rest of the fleet, no. No. It's the crew you're on the board with betrayed. Yeah. They, they well, betrayed I us. go after the closest one to me with my I'm going to follow Malachi, and I'm going to grab the other guy. Well, I'm going gra- to stab the first mate, actually. I'm going to throw right. a spear at him. Give me a second here. We had a crow. Do we have to re-roll a new initiative? We do, but right now I'm figuring out how many of the crew will remain on board, because most of them are probably going to drop ship, jump ship, so that way they're not killed when you know the flying ships decide to, to loose their attack. I'm figuring out how many uh, enemies you're going, or yeah, enemies you're still going to have on board the ship. You have six. All right. So uh, yes, we have to roll initiative if you guys right. attack these guys. Ooh. All right. Twenty-four. One three. Twenty-four. Twenty-three. Ren. Um. Brr. Sorry, I got 14 and uh, get anything for initiative. Oh, wait, that's right. Initiative doesn't have any modifiers. It does. It does? Shit. Yeah, on the top of your sheet should be uh, a number for for your initiative. You should see your initiative at the bottom of Charisma. It should be a plus. I think it should be a plus four. Let me see. For charisma, um, I have a plus two at the bottom of charisma. Yeah, but that's charisma modifier. Uh, one second. I have your sheet here. Oh, sorry. Uh, I'll help you out. Don't worry, don't worry. <laughs> you have a plus five initiative. Which is a so, lot higher than a two. Oh. Hell yeah. <laughs> So just add that to any rolls you do for initiative. So it's, it's a 19. All right. Well, you guys go ahead of them. And the oh, order right. was uh, who, who who had the 24 and who had the 23? I forget. I had 24. Okay, I have 24. So, so, so we're Ren and Argos changed position, but the uh, the initiative is still the same. Okay. Yeah, well, I'm gonna run up on to the first mate to try to just decapitate him automatically. All right, take a roll. Now, unlike Zach, I will let the listeners know. Unlike Zach, on called shot, if a if a critical hit happens, a 19 or a 20, I treat that the same way as old second edition D and D. When in which case it would be like a vorpal sword attack. If he called to decapitate this guy and rolls a 19, he is decapitated. There is no roll for damage. The call happened. I just rolled a natural 20. That dude is beheaded. The end. It's a called shot with a fucking crit. You're good. (laughs) 
That they're, was the first mate I was going after. Exactly. So first mate is down. Five more enemies left on the deck. Okay, I'm going to use my first other two attacks with my great axe. True. To hit two more guys. A dirty 23 and a dirty 17. Roll damage. Uh, look at our blood's being sp spilled upon our ships for being nothing but one drink. Eight, first one. And 12 for a second one. All right. They're up. Next. How many are still alive? Five. All righty. Are there we'll in uh... Starting to look a little bloody. Got a little bloody nose dripping, you know. All righty. What is their position? Right now, they're all kind of around Zachy Chan. Or, yeah, Zachy Chan. <laughs> around Malachi. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. All righty. I'm going to attack the first two, which are bloodied. Okay. So I'm going to cast um, Green Flame Blade as my first attack. So I am going to roll Green Flame Blade. That is a 14. Does a 14 hit? Yep. That'll hit. 14 hit with Green Flame Blade. That's going right. to be a total of... Let me find this other... Green Flame Blade. That is a 19 in total with Green Flame Blade. On one guy? On one guy. And okay. then Green Flame the Blade. One. He was one of the bloody ones? Yeah, one of the bloody ones. He drops. Oh, he's on fire. I can smell the traitors burning him. Green Flame Blade hops to the next guy because um, of the spell casting ability. Right. So, I think that's another D8, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, uh, D8. So that's eight damage to the other bloody guy. Is he roasting or he's still standing? The first guy is dead. The second guy, I'm just waiting on the damage. Yeah, eight damage. Eight damage? He, he's up. He's smoking. Okay. Head <laughs> though. I'm gonna cap, I'm gonna attack him again with a booming blade and does fifteen hit. Yep. Alrighty. With green flame blade. And that does eleven. Sixteen damage. And he drops. Perfect. I'll move to the other two. And let's make this a bit in. Malachi, how do you feel about Argo stealing your kills? <laughs> uh, if Argo participates in the tournament of champions, he'll know how I feel. <laughs> I mean, you yeah, know, we're comrades. We're comrades. I mean, uh, first, come, first come, first serves, you know. We're helping each other out, so I'm just going to try to kill these other two. So I'm just going to roll with my extra attack and plus my bonus action because of my um, war magic. And a 215s. Okay. Damn. Damn it. Off. Um, they will hit. All right. Now I'm just going to add. Let me just roll this. Where's my other D8? Details. Alrighty. And so I'm just going to be casting um, Green Flame Blade. So I'm going to do, I'm going to cast Green Flame Blade on the first guy that I hit and on the second guy that I hit. So this is going to be interesting. Alright, so the first attack of melee damage is going to do 9 plus Green Flame Blade. <laughs> Fifteen, sorry, no, thirteen, thirteen. First guy takes thirteen damage in total. Okay. He's still up, but barely. He's looking pretty. He's look, looking pretty haggard. 
Okay, so now with Green Flame Blade, he take uh, the other guy takes eight damage next to him. Okay, again, he's still up, but he he he's he he's he's huffing and puffing. Let's put it that way. <laughs> okay, so the, so I'm gonna attack the other guy with which the the Green Flame Blade went to. So that does, yeah. Um, How many attacks eight. do you get? Because this is like attack number five. No, uh, four attacks. Okay. Because um, I attacked the first one. Wait, one second. Let me. The the, the 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 green flame transfers are probably throwing me off. Okay. Oh yes, yeah, probably yeah. <laughs> green flame is transferring to the other guy, so I'm gonna attack that guy. I roll this uh, three plus five, uh, eight plus green flame blade because uh, I already cast. No, wait, I, I don't cast Green Flame Blade on my last one, because that's a bonus melee action. So he just takes eight damage. All right, so that one, that guy takes a little bit of damage. All right, but we've knocked down from six to two people. There's only two left. <laughs> yeah, there's only two left, and it is there. Oh, no, no, it's Ren's turn. Ren, you're up. Cool. Um, boy. She has no idea who, what is going on, where these flying ships are coming from. People are throwing around names. She has no idea what's happening. But she does know that the dude in the black cloak who offered her water when she was tied to the pole isn't, you know, was surrounded by enemies. Most of them are dead now, but there's two enemies left. So she's going to charge after one of the enemies to help him out. Um, Just to let you know, one of the two enemies was the uh, the deckhand that had threatened you when he cut you loose. Really? Oh. oh definitely going after him first. <laughs> you, you have a hero? <laughs> Wait, how old is your character? How old what? is your How old is your character? How old she's is Ren? Three hundred years. Oh, she's young compared to Malachi. Yeah, she's a young elf. I think she's my character about, is the youngest. <laughs> she's about Malachi, eight years old. Yeah, Malachi's a, a demigod. <laughs> cool. <laughs> I don't know if that really. I don't know if she's uh, made that connection yet. Um. But she definitely knows the uh, the guy who gave her some gut. So she's gonna go and kill him first. Um, you see, uh, a guy playing side by side with no. Doesn't matter. By a friend. I can't really call her a friend. I don't know her that well. <laughs> I mean, we fought alongside of many elves, Malachi. I never thought I'd die playing side by side with Argos either. You are not dying today, Malachi. You already died once. <laughs> I doubt it'll death keep you down again. Oh, Danny boy, the pipes, the pipes are calling. Yeah, and I need to get back because I left uh, Gilbo Saggins in charge of the inn. <laughs> okay, Glacial Blade attack. And... Uh-oh. Hey, this is my second time on camera for a while. Yes, it is. <laughs> Say cheese. Okay. So, got 14 and... Let's see... Do I apply? I do have a racial bonus for spells because she's a high elf. Um, where'd that go? Ah, spell attack bonus. This is, she should be intelligence. Yeah, it should it should be your intelligence uh, modifier. Oh, okay. Right there. Which is plus five, so. It's 19. Okay, that'll hit. 
Now give me some damage. <laughs> okay. Oh, jeez. Got 16. And do I use a modifier for that? Yeah. Always use a modifier. All right. 16 with uh, what? Dexterity or strength or? Uh, this is a spell, right? It's got to be intelligence. Well, it's um, physical, physical attack. You would use, physical attack, you would use your dexterity bonus, but because you're using a spell or canter, if I believe it's either intelligence or wisdom, correct me if I'm wrong here, guys. Uh, what think... is? She, um, she, well, she's using a, mostly a, their wizard spells, so they should, um, except for the warlock one, um, should apply to her spell modifiers. Right, right, which which falls under intelligence, right? Yeah, yeah. Intel is there, is wisdom or wisdom? Wisdom, if they were cleric based spells. Okay, so yeah, intelligence. Okay, so twenty two. Twenty two damage. Mm -hmm. Your tormentor drops. Is he still alive? He looks like he might be breathing, but he's definitely unconscious. And there's one other guy, right? Uh, yes, there's one more guy. And I'm guessing it's his turn? <laughs> What's he going to do? Yes, that's right. Uh, you guys have done your round. Sorry, I got trapped up on a cord that came out of nowhere. So he is going to turn around and he is going to... Let's see... He is going after Argos. Give me the best shots, traitor. He pulls out a long scimitar from his uh, belt. He gets two attacks with it. What's your armor class? 19. Okay, that one will miss. That one will hit. Let's see here. And scimitars was a D8, if I'm not mistaken. Eight points of damage. All right. Uh, can I be just like the moment he hits me? I just look at him, like shrug it off, like the way that Drogo does it when he gets stabbed. <laughs> you could do that, but he still spits in the wound. <laughs> I want to slap him for that. <laughs> and it is now Malachi's turn. All right. I'm going to first hit the one. Well, I'm going to hit the one that hit Argos. Well, it's the only one left. Well, except for the one that's laying unconscious. But I'm going to keep that for our like, high open friend. She deserves the final blow on him. That's what I kind of figured. <laughs> <laughs> 17 hit. Yeah, that hits. Twenty-one. He drops unconscious, but not dead. <laughs> not yet. Well, I'm going to do my second attack now to finish him off. Okay. That is a dirty 27. Coup de gras. He's done. <laughs> I don't even need damage on that. He's done. All that's left is the one unconscious one. And as you were getting ready to eye up on him, everybody roll me a perception roll. Uh, 17. With advantage. For anybody for anybody that needs it. With advantage, because I mean above your head, it's kind of hard to miss. 26. 15. Okay. I'm getting a lot of 15. Did these dice loaded? <laughs> Got a 11. I'm trying to figure out if I have a perception bonus. You do. This is the first time I have so many dice. Uh, plus on the six. Here we are. All right. So your roll was what? 11 plus six? Yep. So 17. Okay. You guys all see this. You see the flying ships above your head start to separate out from each other. 
as they separate out, you start realizing that on either side of each ship is a black robed wizard that is weaving and ha- moving their hand motions in a way that they are casting a spell. And as they are, they draw their spell together. So port side wizard from one ship is connecting with uh, starboard side wizard of another ship into a gigantic spell thunderbolt that rips down and completely cleaves your ship in half. Your ship is now sinking with you guys standing on the deck, starting a titanic conclave in. Right, I'm going to tell everybody that hold on to me, like the grab hold of me. All right. What do you guys do? No, oh, I guess I'll, I'm grab, gonna... I'll grab hold of Malachi. Okay. You, elf, you can trust Malachi. We may not know each other, but grab on. You um... should hear her tormentor kind of wake up and say <laughs> it's begun you've already lost <laughs> as she's running by to grab on to Malachi she stabs him ah, I, yep too soon <laughs> <laughs> do I need to run for that <laughs> All right, so everybody grabs Malachi. Now what? I'm going to activate my teleportation. Oh, okay. Where are you teleporting to? Us all the way back to the mainland. All right. As you do so, blink. All of a sudden, you're still floating in the middle of the air, in the middle of the squall, underneath the ships, with a black dragon staring directly at you. Where do you think you're going? (laughs) You aren't finished yet. As a matter of fact, you will never be finished until you make this horror disappear. Let this be my final words to you. And he takes an intake of air. His throat starts igniting in a giant fireball. I'm going to ignite my axe in with searing smite. Okay. It's ineffective. The fireball goes all over each, all three of you. And in the searing heat and pain and darkness, you wake up in your own bedchambers, separate from everyone else. Your covers are smoldering, but there is a piece of paper that looks like it's been charred, but still there laying on your covers. Do you pick it up? Yes, I pick it up. In very fancy font, you see you've given been given a glimpse of what happens if you fail. You have been warned. And ladies and gentlemen, that is my one-off of Legends of the Forgotten Gods. Damn, uh, I, 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 damn. Man, that is good. <laughs> I wanted to keep going. <laughs> I want to know what happens. Because cause since this was literally like the future, that means Argos would be like, is Malachi alive? That's the point. The whole entire thing was a dream. Your character, and that's why I said it may or may not be canon because of the fact I didn't want to step on Zach's story arc and toes. So I made it a dream. It's up to Zach if he wants to make this canon as something you guys all dreamed that was a warning. A dream that maybe Malachi made you guys have. Or maybe this is something else completely different. But the out of it not being canon was, it was all a dream. It is a possibility for the future. Very creative. That is so cool. Love it. All right, well, I got to I gotta ask the one person out of everybody. I've got to ask the one person who has given us season one of Legends of the Forgotten Gods. How'd you feel about it, Zach? It threw me off about the flying ships. I wanted to make sure you guys wouldn't go nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> and like, I thought my me act, having Malachi activate his version of the Bifrost was going to get us out of this pickle. That's why the Chronicler was there. 
to make sure you didn't go anywhere because uh uh-uh, you haven't gotten the lesson yet you can't leave <laughs> so that was literally the 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 incarnation of chris the dm <laughs> no the, the chronicler the best way i could describe the chronicler He's like mr has anybody mr. ever watched the old D cartoon yes no, no. Where they rode the the roller coaster in the D and D world, and there was the dungeon master who. Oh my god! You know, I thought this is just like the dungeon master. That's who the chronicler <laughs> guy. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's what the chronicler was, but in this scenario, the chronicler he he may look like that, but this chronicler was literally like the uh, neutrality uh, god from the uh, Dragonlance novels. He does not interfere. He records. And he's seen all possible futures, so he observes to see which one becomes the canon future. This, this is going to be interesting because this dream's going to affect Argos a bit. And it's also, a question, wise. it's also a question. You guys experience the same dreams together. There is also the question that may or may not be uh, asked later on on whether Debaj and Jarrell and uh, and Bird Lady. Didn't also have some format, and possibly Maxwell, and possibly Max. I keep forgetting about Maxwell's character too. Right, Barry, and- Barry. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the the question I got to ask for the guy who gave us season one's uh, Chronicles of Lost, Ro- yeah, Chronicles of Lost Realm, uh, Legends of the Forgotten Gods, and uh, the world and playground, the, the the sandbox that I got to play in today. How'd I do? I'd say about an 8 out of 10. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> it was really good. Well, guys, I hope this ties you guys over listening uh, for the season two of Chronicles of the Lost Realm. Of course, again, I, well, it's kind of late to warn it at the end, but, you know, again, if you have not listened to season one, there was spoilers in this. So, you know, you kind of ruined it for yourself, but hopefully it was good enough for. Just getting that little wet of taste for season two, which should be coming in what? Uh, when this releases in what? About two uh, two additional weeks we'll be picking back up? I was actually thinking about just moving up to next week. We could do that. All right. Well, no. Yeah, we could record next week, but it would be. Let's see. Next week will be the f- release of the final episode of episode one. And then the following week will be this one. So it would be two weeks before people heard it. All right. Yeah. Either way, following this video next week will be the premiere of season two. Really, season two starts next week. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I've been getting really bored without you guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, awesome. I am excited. Damn, then this is a really good. Like, fuck, this was this was a really good one shot to connect to the season two. I like this whole dream stuff, like a uh, premonition. Glad that you got that you didn't like have Zachy Chan there because. You don't know what he, his equipment is, or his power. I know, but seeing his army like that is very intimidating. Cause at this, this is literally the first time, like, like it was like we lost because we were just outgunned. Well, and... that was, that was kind of the point. The get like yeah. the, the idea for the skeletons, and I I probably shouldn't be given this while we're recording here, but you know what? It's the behind the scenes. I could have it a little bit. Um. Yeah. The skeletons, the idea behind the skeletons, when you blast them, I mean, they had 20 hit points. They were easy to kill. But the cute idea that I had behind it was they would, tra- when they were blown apart, they would transmorph onto another skeleton, creating a whole new creature. And that would continue to happen. And then once all the skeletons were destroyed into, into bones and dust, they would have started latching themselves onto the merfolk, like living armor. Oh. <laughs> but it, you know, I had a thunder wave the bones off the ship. Right. Yeah, we both thunder waved them off. <laughs> you know, so I was really trying to create not only a, a dream like a static with the way the creatures would continue to come even after they've been destroyed, but I also wanted to create a, like a, in my mind, a never before seen encounter with, with creatures that are usually pretty well known in Dungeons and Dragons. Mm hmm. But again, there was supposed to be that green, uh, that dreamlike scenario behind it. So, yeah, in everybody's dream, you know, like Ren's character's dream, of course she's going to dream that she got caught trying to steal bread. She's a thief. That's what they do. 
you know, and a bad dream would be you get caught. Uh, Malachi. We don't know if Malachi is alive or dead. We know that Malachi the Black appeared on in the dream, but that could be just a dream. But on the opposite end of the coin for Malachi, of course he's going to dream he's second in command of the ship. <laughs> <laughs> and all no, Mal- Malachi's spirit ha- was the favorite at the wedding. <laughs> oh, that's true. Malachi was at the wedding. Mm-hmm. But physically, the characters don't know, like Debaj and Jarrell and and everybody that witnessed witness Malachi's fall, don't know he's back. So, so in this dream, it's, it could just be a component of the dream. Let's put it this way. Meredith Squallmate, which is the captain of the largest tall uh, tall ship in the Black Sails Navy. Still alive. Probably still alive in the real world. But you watched her brutal death. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. In the dream. So the, you got you guys, if nothing else, you guys are going to be weaving in and out of how much was fantasy and how much was reality your characters will be uh, as you're piecing what you just experienced together. All right. This is, this is really good. That's a, it also leaves kind of an interesting part for our characters because we haven't actually met each other in the real world except for having this shared dream and my character is probably you know it's gonna be like wait a minute who are all these people who are these new guys why was why did any of this happen in one of my dreams so it, yeah i like the uh and you've the got unknown you. and the mystery is cool and you've got two things that are rolling through your head now were those people real or not? And was that little frog guy right when he said, you have a part to play in this future? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So many questions. Yeah. Yeah, because she doesn't know who's real, who isn't real, any of that. And at this point, she doesn't even know uh, other people have had the same dreams because she woke up in her own bed um, probably thinking, oh, my God, that was a horrible, weird dream. Yeah, no more drinking like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, uh, Ardos would would he be in the Elven Kingdom right now with uh with Hela when he had that dream, or some tavern somewhere? You would be home with your family. Okay. You're, you're, you're not some traveling bard out in the uh. The, you you got a baby and a wife now, man. You ain't you ain't out roaming. <laughs> <laughs> Um, alrighty, but this is gonna be interesting because this, this, because remember that Argos' his character. If you want, um, this, this is this is an insight on my character. Um, he like, he wants to remember again in season one, his goal was to unite his people, and now he wants to protect them, and he also wants to make sure they survive the culture. And since now he united them with the elves, he kind of extended that love. You know, the elves are now his people as well in his kingdom. Exactly. Exactly. That's why you're home with your wife and your your child. You're 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 where you belong with your people. Yeah, and we do a zoom in on where Malachi's body landed in Mount Jericho, and his eyes open. <laughs> hey, that's yeah. His that's, Malachi was just taking a nap. Malachi's eyes open, and he just kind of gets a little smirk on his face as he stares into the camera in the fourth wall and. <laughs> Nods his head and goes, black would be a killer color on me. <laughs> <laughs> That's literally his first thought. Like, damn, like, I look great in black. Old <laughs> oh, crossbow ties a rope around it, around the air, shoots up and pulls himself out of the 2,000 foot deep. I mean, how deep is the Earth's core? Because you did say he was literally a curl. <laughs> Yeah, but we're not on Earth, and this planet could be a hell of a lot denser than than actual Earth. True, true. Um, but could Malachi just bifrost himself out of there, or you're gonna like climb it barehanded? You fall two thousand feet with a flaming bull. See if you feel like bifrosting. <laughs> <laughs> no, Malachi cannot bifrost, but bifrost. Out if he's inside of a place, he has to be outside. Oh, it's like that weird thing when you're playing a, a video game. Once you go inside, you can't fast travel. You have to walk back outside. 
<laughs> oh, of course. Malachi has to have... Bike for us. Let's go fast, probably. Sorry. He's going to be climbing for the next couple of months, I think. Oh, uh, okay. So that's why Malachi's fast travel didn't work in the dreams, because the enemies were nearby. And it's also because his body was indoors, so he himself <laughs> can't buy Frost out. <laughs> yeah. All right, here's the final question I will ask of everybody here. I've asked everybody here, let's get Zach's friend involved, who's been sitting in the background the whole entire time. Listening to the show. What's that? He walked away a while ago. Oh, all right. That's my answer. He hated it. <laughs> <laughs> Nah, I think he said he had to go charge his phone. Ah, uh, okay. Well, guys, yeah. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I hope it's been uh, an experience for you guys, and I hope that I get to do this again one day. And also, some other people might take a shot at the reins of DMing as well. But until I volunteer then, Kirk to be next DM after season two. That works if for me. Five season two. If, if uh, well, well, he can still do it if he doesn't survive. Just you that's know, true. I mean. <laughs> um, well, if He's I not, survive this pandemic, maybe. <laughs> but guys, tell me what you think. Do you think this was a great adventure and you want to see more one offs like that? Let me know uh -huh. in the comment section down below. Like, share, comment, subscribe, and get ready. We're coming back next week with season two of Legends of the Forgotten Gods. And Til don't forget. Oh, yes. my bad. No, go ahead. Don't forget, subscribe to Gary's fan page. Yes, We're Gary's fan. Gary has a fan page. Yeah, no. Gary has a fan page. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, I never knew Gary had a fan page. Well, I Let's guess we're his first. Fuck first it, Gary's got a though. fan page. Make sure you subscribe to it to get all the inside details of Legends of the Forgotten Gods. Yes, I actually might make Gary a fan page. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you and we'll catch you next week, season two of Legends of the Forgotten Gods. Have a good one, guys. Yep.